we got a walkway, a stamp walkway we're doing today. We got one on the back of the house here. We got one on the front of the house. This is the one out back. Take a walk out front. Two different patterns we're doing today. We're doing a stone texture out back. We're doing the ashlar slate out front. Both are four feet wide. About five inches thick. That's that's what we're doing today. Hey guys, Mike here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you guys how to pour a concrete sidewalk just like we do. We got a, a front walkway like, like you saw in a back walkway. And we're just gonna start pouring the concrete here out back. We've already done we've already done some concrete work on this site. We did a concrete patio that was stamped. And stay tuned for the whole video. You'll get to see the, the back walkway here, the back sidewalk, and also the front sidewalk pour. And then at the end of this video, I'll have a I'll have a video pop up that shows you how to do a nice light broom finish if that's what you want to do. We're actually gonna stamp this concrete so this the back walkway here is going to have a stone texture and the front one is going to have ashlar slate so that'll pop up uh, at the end of the video as part two this will be that'll be a part two video this video is going to be about how to pour this concrete sidewalk so what we're doing is we get a five inch thick concrete sidewalk we're using 4,000 psi concrete and it's got fiber mesh in it and as you can see the the sidewalk also has a matter rebar in it that's a half inch rebar, that's number four rebar. And it's got two inches of styrofoam under it too. And it, we live in Maine, so we get a lot of freeze thaw cycles in the winter. And what the styrofoam does is it helps insulate the ground and helps keep that concrete from heaving in the winter. So it'll stay nice and flat and, and won't crack from the heaving. So we got this thing all formed up. You know, we went out about four feet from the building, as you can see out the back door of the garage. And then the forms ran right nice and parallel with the garage. We used two by eights to form it with. And then for those curves, we used AZAC forms. Those that AZAC is like what builders use for trim PVC. They're PVC boards and they bend really well. They're pretty expensive, but they work really well for bending forms for concrete. They don't break very easily and they bend. You can get a really sharp bend out of them. So what we're doing is we're getting most of this concrete poured out back here and you know for us because we do it every day that's just the way we do it when we pour concrete we like to get quite a bit of concrete on the ground poured out you can see Darren's way back there he's magging the edges while Luke and I are getting the concrete raked around and then we can get to screeding it before you know instead of just pouring out 10 feet screeding pouring a little bit more screeding which is perfectly fine if you're if you're new to this there's nothing wrong with that but with us we like to get a bunch dumped out and on the ground first so like I said we're using a 4,000 psi concrete in Maine all our exterior concrete pours are 4,000 psi whereas I know some of you guys in other parts of the country where you don't get the winters like we do you pour 3,000 psi outside that's fine the 4,000 for us, it's just a little more durable, it's a little stronger. And another thing we do is we add air entrainment to the concrete. And what that is, is air entrainment is just these tiny microscopic bubbles that they add in right at the concrete plant when they batch the concrete. And obviously you can't see it in there. But what the air entrainment does is it allows the water, when, when water gets on the concrete and gets absorbed into the concrete, in the winter when that water wants to freeze inside the concrete it's going to expand and the air bubbles give that water room to expand inside the concrete without popping the surface off and causing like spalling and scaling and stuff like that so that's why we use air entrainment here probably most states that have freeze and thaw cycles use it it doesn't really affect the finishability or the pouring of the concrete you don't even really notice it's in there you can see I got the concrete driver helping us out using my pencil vibrator. That's my DeWalt pencil vibrator. And we use that whenever we want to, you know, the, when we strip the forms, we want it to look really smooth on the outside edges of the forms. 
So that that's what that pencil vibrator is for. I'll have a link for that down in the description. We use that thing all the time. It's uh, it's one of the, the tools we use a lot of whenever we do exterior concrete or stairs. But concrete sidewalks, you know, we, we pour a lot of concrete sidewalks. Let me know down in the description how many of you guys pour sidewalks, how many of you guys pour walkways and patios, or do you just do concrete floors? You know, do, do you do it all? We do a lot of these in the course of a season. I'm using that bull float I'm using. It's got a swivel head on it, so that makes it pretty easy to use. That's a Marshalltown bull float. The rakes we use, the concrete rakes of Marshalltown, the screeds of Marshalltown. The mag floats we use are from Marshalltown. So I have links for all those tools down in the description also, guys. If you're looking for, you know, to use the same kind of tools that I use. You can see Darren's getting that screeded out away from the building. And uh, then he's going to turn and come down the edge. We like setting, whenever we can, we always like setting our forms to grade. It makes pouring concrete so much easier. Hard to see, ain't it? So he's making sure he's filling all his foot tracks. We don't want to leave any little any little divots or dips in the concrete. All this concrete kind of slopes away from the house just a little bit. So there's they're not perfectly flat. It's got some slope to it. It slopes probably half three quarters of an inch in that four feet. So whenever it rains, the water's gonna run right off. Darren's going to get that little piece screeded there, and then Luke's going to grab the screed and help him screed. So it's always not, you know, two guys can pour something like this pretty easy. This walkway is about 45 feet long, 4 feet wide. But because we're going to pour it and then stamp it after, you know, the three of us are here. But I, two guys could do it. I mean, one guy could do it. You'd just be pretty tired by the time you get done. Two guys is ideal. Three is even better. You know, when I when I grew up, when I started doing this at a very young age, I was about 15, 16 years old. The guy I started with, you know, I worked with him for four or five years. We were always shorthanded. We were pouring big stuff, you know, 10,000 square feet. We never had enough guys. It was just, it was just crazy, really. So, you know, I learned a lot from that. I'd rather have one extra guy on a job, honestly, than not have enough guys. <laughs> I did that I did that enough, so that's not the way I want to pour concrete. So you can see Darren's vibrating around that curve. We want to make sure when we strip those forms that we don't have any honeycombs or ratty areas. You know, we want those edges to look nice and smooth. That's all part of doing, you know, a quality concrete job. Now Darren's gonna run that bow float up. You're gonna see how it smooths out the the aggregate there at the surface it pushes that aggregate down a little bit brings up some nice paste some nice cement cream to to be able to finish later on after the concrete cures up some you run that over that twice and it's really really nice and smooth So we're going to finish up on that curve and then stay tuned. We're going to show you how we pour the front concrete sidewalk. So you can check that out also. If you're looking, you know, if you're looking to pour a concrete sidewalk, I'll have another video pop up at the end. It'll show you what we did to form, how we pour it, how we broom finish it. So you'll be able to check that out. Also, next week, what I got coming out next week is I have what's called the Concrete Underground. That's going to be my private, my private membership area where, you know, I'm going to go into more depth with trainings and videos and tutorials. And you'll have more access to me for coaching, mentoring, training, uh, emailing. You know, we'll be able to talk through a forum. We can talk. You can ask questions. We can, we can uh, you know talk back and forth through the forum but you'll get more access to me in there you get more trainings if you want to learn how to do this if you want to learn how to start your own business that concrete underground is going to be where you're going to want to be at so next week i'll have a, a link for that so you can check that out and see if that's something that interests you or not but 
I know when I first started out doing this, you know, I didn't really know anything about how to be in business for myself, how to run a business. I knew how to pour concrete because I'd been working for somebody for quite a few years, but um, it's really a bonus or beneficial to have somebody that can mentor you or train you and really teach you the ropes and keep you from making mistakes. When you make a mistake with concrete, it can get pretty expensive. So if you can minimize mistakes, I'm not saying I've, I've never made mistakes. I did. That's kind of how I learned most of my stuff is uh, making mistakes. But now after doing this for 40 years, you know, I've, I've, got a, I've got a pretty good system down. And my business makes really good money. We're really busy. You know, we've got a lot of customers. We've got a really good name. So if that's something you're, you're looking to do, I can hopefully help you with that through the concrete underground. So we're going to move everything out front get the walkway done out front Darren's gonna show you right here how he's gonna finish up bull floating this around the curve here in a second he's gonna get that screeded off get that mag last piece mag floated you see that little tool in his back pocket that's called a margin trial and we got a, a there's a leather pocket protector we have to slide that margin trial in and then that's what we use to carry around our mag floats with us so that's and we use the margin trial for other things too, for cleaning, scraping stuff. But we use it mostly to carry that mag float around with us so we don't have to just keep it in our hand. You can see he's going to kind of walk that around the curve. See, see that? So he can get that curve nice and bull floated. And that's how we bull float around a curve like that when we can walk it from the outside. So we're going to get the camera moved out front. We're going to show you how we approach the front walkway you can see the front one's more in the sun so it even though we're pouring this second this one's probably going to end up curing and setting up faster than the one out back the one out back's in the shade now what luke's doing is he's holding up some poly up against the building and that plastic is just to help keep any little splatters when the concrete drops out of the chute onto the styrofoam from splattering onto the guy's brand new door and siding right there. And he just really needs to hold it up while we're getting that concrete there. And as soon as we get that filled up, he can take that down. We're gonna get this spread out. We're gonna pour out most of this walkway. This one's about 35 feet long. Again, if you're new to this, you don't have to pour out as much as we do. You know, just pour out 10, 12 feet at a time. Get your edges vibrated mag floated and then get it screeded and then move on again hopefully you'll get a good concrete driver like we do that's kind of patient if you're new and you know he's not going to try to hurry you just know there is a time limit you know most concrete companies do have a time limit depending on how many yards of concrete are on the truck you know they give you a lot of them will give you seven to ten minutes per yard to get the concrete dumped out and then if you're longer than that if you take longer than that they might end up charging you a little extra by the you know by the hour or something like that I would check check with them first if you're concerned about that again we got the styrofoam out here to help protect the walkway from heaving in the winter we got the rebar mat we got the bricks under the rebar holding it up those bricks aren't going to hurt the integrity of the concrete at all, even though it's, you know, you're going to have two, two and a half inches over that little piece of brick. That's not going to bother that at all. We got fiber mesh in the concrete too. I always pour concrete with fiber mesh. So there's a couple different kinds of reinforcement in here. That rebar, you know, that rebar doesn't actually add strength to the concrete. You know, like I said, we're using a 4,000 PSI concrete and the rebar doesn't make it 4,500 PSI, but what the rebar does is when we, we're going to score some joints in this either by sawing it or by, by hand tooling in a joint. And hopefully the concrete's going to crack right in that joint. And what the rebar does is it helps hold everything together nice and tight. Same with wire mesh. It just helps hold it together. So if the concrete wants to crack and you don't have any rebar in there, you know, there's a good chance the crack could separate, lift, or settle. But with the rebar in there, it holds it together, all, all that nice and tight. So that crack stays nice and tight, doesn't open up. Yeah, you can see, we, we like to get everything poured right out. And we'll leave, 
we'll leave a little space at the end in case we're high. You know, we don't have to shovel out too, too much. But in general, when we pour, we like to get most of the stuff poured right out. Then I'm going to use that pencil vibrator again to get all the edges smooth. Vibrate out any little air pockets. And then that's it. We'll be done with that. And Darren's up there. He's starting to screed away from the house. You know, he's mag floating right where he started to make sure that's nice and smooth up against there. And then Luke's going to go grab a little bit longer straight edge so we can get around that curve. You know, both guys can screed from the outside and we can get around that curve. This walkway is four feet wide and again about 35 feet long. We like to get our edges mag flow. We like the edges to be nice and clean when we screed off them. We don't want to be screeding off, you know, these rocks or the cement paste that gets on top of the forms. We like everything nice and smooth. Now you can see they're going to each grab that from the outside and they're just going to, they pull that screed. They don't saw with it. We don't saw concrete. We, we screed concrete. So we, we just pull it and we keep the screed on the back edge just a little bit. We tip it so it's on the back edge and so the front edge of the screed isn't digging into the concrete. And we make sure we apply pressure down on the forms so we're screeding right off top of the forms. And then if you've got a guy raking like I am, you know, he can keep it pretty close. Not, you don't want the concrete too low, but you do want it a just a little bit high behind the screed. You want the screed to be pulling back a little bit of concrete as, you, as you're coming down the forms. And that'll keep your two screed guys from having to stop. So again, at the end of this video, I'm gonna sh I'm gonna have a video pop up that shows you, you know, how to do a nice light broom finish, and then eventually the next video I'm coming out with it, I'm gonna show you how we screed or how we finish this concrete. So we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna stamp this front one here. This is gonna be Ashler slate, and then we're gonna stamp the back one a stone texture. So you have to come back for that so you can see see those. If, if you like this video, go ahead down there and smash that like button now. I'd appreciate that. That helps me out with YouTube. You know, YouTube ranks my videos a lot better so more people can see them if you guys like it. And then also, if you're not subscribed yet, you know, I come out with a couple videos a week showing and teaching you guys how to do concrete flat work. So if you're not a subscriber yet, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. I'd appreciate that also. Hit the little bell notification so you'll know whenever I come out with a new video. Most of the time I come out with new videos on on Mondays and Fridays at 9.30, so you can you can be ready for that. So Darren and Luke, they're gonna finish up that one little piece, get it screeded, and then I'm gonna bow float it. And you can see how I run the bow float up and down the concrete, and the bow float's gonna push down all that aggregate, bring up a little bit of the concrete paste, the concrete uh, cement paste for us, so when we get ready to finish it, we're not finishing the rock or the aggregate in the concrete we're just finishing the paste and then right here at the end I'm going to show you what I do after I get done bow floating just to finish things off you know and make things a little easier when you go to put the finish on the concrete yeah Darren says we're good to go there so so I'm going to do this this one last pass with a bow float and then, you know, Darren and Luke get the tools all washed up. Now, here's what I'm doing. Any little areas I think need a little extra smoothing out, I'm going to go up there with my mag float, and I'm going to smooth those areas out. And those could be little tiny rock holes the bull float didn't get, or it could just be the bull float lines themselves. But I like to get everything just as nice and smooth as possible before the concrete starts setting up too much. You know, I'll get it, we'll get it magged out, whatever I need to mag float out. And then we'll walk away and then just let it cure and get ready for, get ready for finishing. And I'll have a video pop up here at the end that shows you the timing, you know, of when to start finishing concrete. That's, that's the art with concrete is knowing when to start finishing. You know, you don't want to start too early. You don't want to start too late. It takes experience to learn how to win, you know, learn when to start. And that's, I got a couple videos about that that you can learn from also. 
Well, that's it, guys. That's how we pour a concrete sidewalk. You know, thanks for watching. Go ahead down there and hit subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video.